Should a writer seek out a manager or should they wait till the manager seeks them out? I think that like they should seek out a manager for sure, but I do think that there's uh, effective ways to do that. For instance, seeing in the roster, is there somebody that you have a personal relationship to so you could go through, you know, ideally like a friend who may be repped by a manager, uh, that could be helpful. Sorry, so you said a roster? Like, so a manager might have a, you know, like a multiple clients that are, um, that they work with, you know, and uh, one of them might be the friend of a writer who's unrepped, and then they just like might just go to somebody in that, you know, who that manager reps, and a writer or whoever, and then just say, hey, you know, I'd love to get my work to your manager. Could you know, make an introduction? So that's a way to do it. Um, another way to do it is you basically just go, you know, go through like just an email. You have an email query, you know, letter where you just send it. And I think that they just need to be really simple. Like, hey, my name is such and such. Uh, I have a science fiction uh, script. Um, I would love for you to check it out. Here's the log line. If you're interested, I'm happy to sign like a, a script release. Just uh, no one just wants to get exposed to a bunch of material legally. So just saying, hey, I'm open to sign that, you know, keep it simple. That's great. Like that's all, you know, this is a very simple email. And ideally you research the managers because like, I don't really work with a lot of like, you know, like purely comedy clients. Like it's just not my, you know, it's not my wheelhouse. And, you know, sometimes people just will be like, you're a manager, but they don't see that I have a specific curation. So I think you really need to know who you're contacting or else you're wasting your time. And I think that like, there doesn't need to be a whole narrative to that email. It needs to be something that you could just pick up your iPhone and just read it and go, okay, do I like this log line? Does that interest me? You know, because sometimes I get these emails that are super long and I don't have a lot of bandwidth, you know. So for me, it's just like, it's almost like diminishing returns on making it too wordy. It's almost better just to say, my concept is so hot, like you're gonna wanna read the script. It's gonna be, you're just gonna read it and you're gonna go, tell me more. And that's enough. But, you know, sometimes you get too much information and, you know, I think that it's not the, the right uh, way to move forward because it's just as confusing because you're like, what does this person want? Who are they? It just becomes more about it. If it's like, here's an idea, let's talk, you know? And I think that's the, the key to do is just keep it simple. What is a script release? Like some type of like, you know, paperwork that, you know, they sign that. So, you know, you're not, you know, connected to their script. If you somehow 10 years later have a you know, slightly similar project. It's just like, it's it's customary for almost all managers, you know, to have some level of protection for being exposed to new work. So it releases you of liability I, in, in case they feel that there's another script out there similar to theirs. I guess, I mean, it's just normal. I mean, whatever, you know, any way to frame it. I mean, it's just no one wants to like get a bunch of scripts sent to them and, sure. and then somehow is there a connection to other materials? It just keeps it simple. It's just a professional way um, when you're exposed to new work and you know, it's just smart for any manager to not just get random you know, emails of scripts. So you know, you know someone's not really familiar with the businesses if they start by emailing you their script. They should always like be clearly open to like signing that release. At what point should a writer reevaluate whether they're ready to approach a manager or agent? I don't, you know, I think that like, ideally they have like a body of work that, you know, speaks to their voice. So let's say they, you know, write in the romantic comedy genre, if they have a few scripts that really are like reflective of who they are, then why not? You know, I think um, they should try out, you know, the different, you know, steps to getting a rep, I think it's valuable. Now, if someone is not really clear on what they want to do and they're still kind of discovering what gets them excited, then maybe they should just kind of like have fun and make things and then kind of find their their voice later and, and there's no pressure to have a rep. You don't need one as, you know, as a creator, you could just do your own thing. But I think it, it it's, it's valuable when you have a, a sense of what kind of, you know, um, 
you know, creator you want to be, what genre you want to work in, who do you want to collaborate with. So the more specific you get about what you're passionate about is probably a time where maybe a rep could be valuable. How common is it for a manager to part ways with their client? I mean, I think it's like case by case. I don't think there's like a frequency or a normal way to do it or, you know, where it's like more or less uh, given, you know, like the manager, like there's not like, I guess a way, like a framework where you could point to like, this is what's typical. But, you know, I just think that in general, like, you know, people who are working together on a regular basis should have like, you know, they can't always have a shared vision. That's not, I mean, nobody you work with in any profession is always completely aligned. But I think that it has to be in the in a, in a certain like level of communication where there's a mutual respect and the paths that you've embarked on are um, accepted and ex and they excite you you and your uh, collaborator versus a huge schism and sense of you know strategy. So yeah, I mean it's just case to case. You know, I think you just have to work with people that get you excited and get you passionate. So I think that's the most important part and whether or not there's a departure or they're not, I mean, that's fine. You know, you, you really have one life to live. You want to enjoy who you work with. Sure. Cause there can be people that are, they're brilliant at what they do. And then maybe temperament wise, they're not a match or vice versa. There can be people that, as you said earlier, you want to hang with, but maybe talent level, they're not there yet, yet, you know, um, I think that like you just want to work with people that you believe in, you know, and and they have to believe in you too. So there, that's a you know, it's the collaboration, and you know that there's a you know there's going to be challenges, you know, in all facets of the business, but you're fine with them, you know. And like I said, it's all about adaptation. So can you work together as everything shifts and you have to keep coming up with new ways to to find the win? Because at the, that's what we want to do. We want to push to go forward. We want to keep moving. We want to keep progressing. And I think that's the goal is that the people you're working with have that, you know, the same vision to lead to being a successful filmmaker, you know. And I think that, like, same with, you know, as a manager, you share the success with your clients, you know, something you feel the wins, too. So I think that the question is, do your client and you have, a, have that partnership that's meaningful? And if there is problems and either of the person doesn't want to work together, that's fine. You know, they could work with somebody else or vice versa. It's not a tragedy. It's just you have to work with people that you find it a fulfilling profession to be part of this team and that's what that's what matters is that the, at the end of the day you didn't just sell the project you know and you feel good you like that you like what the person's about you like what you you really enjoy the the getting there it's not just that one sale it's like the the communication was in place you know you guys like how, you get excited about the same movies you know so i think that you know it's fine if relationships part because then maybe there's a, another rep who connects with them on a, in, a, in a better way. So it's not about just collecting random people. It's about building successful teams. And it's great to have belief in people. But unfortunately, in the real world, people will let you down. And mm -hmm. maybe they don't try to, maybe it's not intentional. But have you ever had to have a conversation with someone that says, you know, I need you to be more on point? Or we had this meeting, you didn't show up. You don't have to give me specifics as to who someone is, but where they weren't holding up their end of the bargain. And you had to have, quote, the talk. Honestly, no. Like, I don't want to have that talk. I mean, I think that, you know, there is a period where you're talking to a potential client and you just have to be honest, like, with uh, them about how you like the work and... You know, maybe you talk to their collaborators about their experience working with them and just get a sense of like what's important, you sure. know, and when you know what's important, 
to a collaborator and they know your values, I don't have issues about performance. So it's not like somebody's like slipping, is that we've already kind of got through it in the initial like introduction and uh and you know teaming up. Okay. What if someone has some dry periods in their life where they're not creating anything? Would you retain them as a client? I mean, like everybody has to work their own way. Like there isn't like it's not a mechanical process. It's not like they're making widgets, you know? Is that it's deeply personal to tell a story, you know? It's not something that you could just, you know, turn into a system where you could just do a paint by numbers process. And if you could, it'd probably be a terrible movie. Um, it, that's not what I want. They, they might have to take time, you know? So when there's a collaborator and they're like, hey, I need some distance to kind of come up with an idea or, you know, to work on a project, that's fine. I have plenty of clients that are in the mix of something new. So the only area where that could be problematic, and I haven't dealt with that personally, but if somebody's hired to do a job and then they can't execute on it, that's where that becomes a problem. Not when they need time to you know write a new spec, it's when there's a contract sign and you know money has exchanged hands and somebody's like paralyzed. That could be an issue for sure. Like, but it's not a, to me, it's not a big deal if a storyteller needs to sit back and like watch movies, like live a little bit, run around, do different things, and then just lock in to a vision for a project. Like uh, my brother's a filmmaker and I see him sometimes like he'll have to walk into a museum or he'll do something or he'll go somewhere and then he'll get his mind activated. So I've seen it growing up and my dad is also an author. He's written some historical uh, you know, novels. He needs to just kind of like get that groove. So it's fine to me. I don't have an expectation that a person has to constantly be churning out material. Uh, they, whatever they need to get you know, the ideas, you know, building, you know, and moving forward is fine with me. But if someone has an advance on a book and they have a, a contractual obligation to turn in some type of pages at a certain time and they haven't, you've never had to deal with, no. you know, and then you're calling and there's no return calls and, you know, you've never had to face that. No, like the, the when the, when the contract is signed, I've, had clients just get to work, you know, it's, good. it's not no, precious it's good. at all. They just do their job. And I know sometimes like you'll see, um, you know, in movies, this like, you know, author who's like, you know, <laughs> totally out to lunch and not in the game at all. And then their agents calling or whatever, you know, but like for pages, no, I haven't dealt with that. They're, you know, they're working on a project to professionals and they're delivering, uh, you know, on time. Okay. So you haven't had any scenes of like factotum or barfly where you have to go and pull someone out of the corner bar and get them in front of the typewriter? No, not at all. Like, okay. uh, it's, it's, it's not that, you know, unfortunately, it's not that exotic. It's not like a, a movie. It's just kind of like this do their thing. Like if you're hiring somebody in any profession. Good. Okay. Sounds like you have a good intuition as to who you take on. So yeah, good. definitely.